100 days Stardew Valley, 200 days, 300 days, old. Welcome to 100 days of modded Stardew Valley. I had three goals for myself this playthrough. I wanted to marry a modded NPC, complete Jojo the Community Center, and make my huge modded farm look good. I also just kind of wanted to understand mods as I went. Last time I asked you guys to like and subscribe, we got over 4,000 likes and 600 subscribers in a single week on one video. Let's try to break that and shoot for 300 subscribers in one day and break my old all-time record. And if you're curious why YouTubers ask you to like so much, it's because liking helps the algorithm, so drop a like too. Day one began with an appropriate amount of messing with settings, then moved to exploring the massive farm that immersed the farm too includes easily over four times the tiles as the standard farm and is super cool. I just checked out the rest of the massive map the rest of the day and planted my basic starter crops. Day 2. I continued exploring the map and found some new NPCs like Martin and Sophia. My plan was to romance Sophia, but since she had really annoying gifts, that plan was on hold for now. I just fished the rest of the day after that. Days 3 and 4 were just fishing days to start getting some money going. Day 5, I got my cat, and after thinking for a little bit, I went with the name Waff, and I got lost in the woods and barely made it home before passing out. On day 6, I finally went to the mine. I didn't go yesterday since the luck was really bad and I didn't want to deal with that. Also, the run to the mines is so much longer on this map, it's really annoying. I did decent, got down around 15 floors. On day 7, I grabbed my potatoes, then sold them to Pierre. With the money I got from them, I bought 63 more seeds, then fished more. Days 8 and 9. Since it was raining on both days 8 and 9, I went fishing for catfish on both days. This time, I actually managed to catch a few of them. After watering, I checked out the far east side of the map on day 10. It actually added a new bridge that I can catch puppy fish off, which is a loved gift for Sophia, so that was pretty convenient. I also triggered the community center cutscene finally. Day 11. You might notice things look a little bit different today, and that's because I forgot to add the recolor mod, so I added it today. Looks pretty cool in my opinion. After that, got drugged, donated some flowers to an apple, and realized how soul-crushing this run was going to be. I forgot to mention it earlier, but I actually went with the remixed bundles, and I got completely screwed. I had so many annoying bundles. The Brewer's Bundle, the Garden Bundle, and the Wild Medicine Bundle. And that's just what I had discovered so far. There were probably going to be even more ones. At this point, I was honestly considering doing Joja, but you'll see what I actually do in the later days. Fished all day on day 12, so I could be prepared for the egg festival. On day 13, it was the egg festival, and I realized I'd made a fatal mistake. My potatoes were ready, but uh, I couldn't sell them since everything was closed. <laughs> that meant I basically had $5,000 worth of potatoes that were basically useless. That aside, I went and bought my strawberries, and then won the egg festival. I started watering on day 14, and I, 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 I could already tell this was going to be a nightmare. The water is so far away. Alright, quick side rant. Anyone else hate how useless the well is in normal gameplay? On most farms, the water is like 3 seconds away, but on this farm, it's like 20 seconds there and back, and it's so annoying. Anyways, after that, I upgraded my pickaxe to copper, then cleared some of my farm. Day 15, I was back to hell. After finishing the... I just ran around the map grabbing forageable. I also found a forest sword in the woods near the wizard. It's so much better than my normal sword, so that was super nice. I woke up to the surprise of my finished pickaxe being mailed to me, so that was kinda handy, I guess. After that, I snagged a fiberglass rod, and got super lucky with around 8 hours of bubble spots on the beat. Since they just kept appearing, I ended up staying the whole day. I tore through the mines on day 17, making it down 25 levels and getting through the super annoying dark levels, only getting lost looking for a ladder once. Day 18, I cracked open some geodes, then donated the minerals from them, and then upgraded my axe. I also bought the upgraded backpack, which was super handy. I then got a Sophia cutscene that let me buy sprinklers from her, and plus 7 luck? Holy smokes, that's insane! I also planted the cauliflower seeds around the sprinkler, then I broke them right away? I I don't know what I'm doing in this recording. Day 19, I collected my forageables, then crafted 90 seed packets and planted them all. Partway through watering them, I realized I didn't hate myself, so I restarted the day and only made 30. Leveled up my fishing the rest of the day. After growing through hell on earth, I bought 7 basic sprinklers. I was gonna buy standard ones, but they cost a lot more, so I don't think they're worth it. The main reason people use normal sprinklers is for space, since the small ones are really inefficient. But since space isn't really an issue on this farm, I bought the cheaper ones. After that, fish for a bit, then panic place my sprinklers and ran to bed. On day 21, strawberries were ready to go, so I grabbed them all. I also chose fruit bats today because, well, come on, you already know my thoughts on this. Farmed iron the rest of the day, but accidentally managed to get down 5 floors, so that was nice I guess? I was really close to fishing 8 today, and it was raining, so I fished to level 8. The main reason I wanted level 8 is so I could get puppy fish, which is a loved gift for Sophia. I had just been giving her gold quality forge rules since I didn't have any loved gift. This was gonna speed it up a ton. After all that fishing, I ended up with a haul of around 7,000 gold. Got down to floor 16 the mines, and missed getting home by about 15 steps on day 23. Woke up to a 4 digit bell from Joja, then fished all day on the east bridge. Got 3 puppy fish, which was very handy. I instantly went over to Sophia's and gave her one, then sold the rest of the fish for a total of 3,000 gold. 
old. I had a backlog of things I could donate to the museum today, so I grabbed those, then got a Willy cutscene telling me about a fancy fish. So I went and tried for that before giving up and running over to the museum before it closed. They're at the farm the rest of the day. Day 26, I decided to remove my strawberries and crops that wouldn't finish in time, and set up some paths and sprinklers. Not gonna lie, it took me a little bit of time to get the sprinklers in the right layout, but I got it done in the end. Just enough time to get some more puppy fish. Added up to 1.4k gold total. Day 27, I bumped all my sprinklers down one, since one of them was just slightly watering onto a path and it was killing me. Crafted my remaining spring forgeables into seed packets after that, and sold them. I also upgraded my pickaxe to iron, so I could see what was in this place that was locked behind a stone and wood. The thing is, I only needed a pickaxe to get in because I could chair glitch in past the wood. Between my fish and the forgeable seed packets, I made 13k gold, which is a super good start for summer. Today was a killer day for fishing. I bought an iridium rod, and since it was raining, I went and fished on the east bridge. I didn't realize it, but you could actually catch puppy fish and catfish on the same bridge, which was super OP. I also got two diamonds and a Neptune's Glaive, which is a really solid weapon that was going to help in the mines. Day 1 of summer! I ended up buying way too many seeds, but it's whatever since I can plant them later. I also had a nice chat with Demetrius, which was pretty cool. I like all these extra cuts in Stardew Valley Expanded Ads. And since my pickaxe was done, I got into this room that I realized was actually connected on my farm, which I did not realize. I have no idea what it does, but my guess is it could be somewhere for aging wine, which I guess could be handy. I was finally free from watering's grasp on day 30, and I decided I was going to take it even further. I had some extra melon seeds, so I bought 10 more sprinklers and placed all of those down. Then I fished the rest of the day trying to get fishing level 10. The railway opened on day 31, and I met Susan. I checked out her house, and it was pretty nice. Cool character to introduce. I also found another sword up there, like the forest sword, but too bad it was useless. Way worse than my Neptune's glaive. While leaving from some more fishing, I got a cutscene showing that Joja is a bunch of scumbags. It sure would be a shame if someone was to buy the membership, wouldn't it? I had 12 more seeds laying around on day 32, so I grabbed 3 more sprinklers, cause come on, it would just be criminal not to plant those. Totally not addicted to sprinklers. I also got a Sophia cutscene and met her friend. I also definitely chose the wrong dialogue option. I just cleared my farm the rest of the day. Fun fact, days 33 and 34 were actually recorded in 4k quality. Look at that quality when you zoom in, holy smokes. Anyways, I actually lied to you guys. I'm not done with sprinklers. I went and bought five more and planted my hops near them. I'd forgotten to buy hops earlier and they are a really good food source, so I definitely was gonna need them. I was trying to save 20k gold so I could buy Jojo membership and the minecart upgrade, but too many purchases were tempting me, man. It was finally the day today. A good luck day. With the luck in mind, I made it down around 30 floors, which was very good. I got a decent bit into the fire levels. I also got two rings, a magnet ring and a glow ring. Started the day by bringing Sophia a gift. The hearts were steadily climbing with her, which was nice. I was definitely going to be married by the end of this. Fish for a little bit after that, then headed home and got a Robin cutscene where she told me to visit her workshop for repair on the mysterious cabin I found. I visited her and found out I needed 600 stone. Yeah, okay, that's fair. 150 hardwood. Okay, that hurts a little bit, not gonna lie. 50 iron bars. Okay, that's not cheap. Oh boy. 20 batteries? I instantly started to panic since I wasn't even high enough level to craft the lightning rods I would need to get the batteries. I panic chopped every single stump I possibly could on my farm trying to level up and then fell into a feverish sleep. Steps 2 and 3 in my leveling foraging plan commenced. I quickly upgraded my axe so I could break the bigger stumps, then grabbed the forageables I needed to complete the summer foraging bundle and get 30 free seeds. I then crafted another 30 seeds with the forageables I had lying around. You know what that means. MORE SPRINKLERS! LET'S GO! After getting down all those forageables, I farmed more iron since I was gonna need a lot of it. I was too impatient on day 37, so I went mining on a nah luck day. Got down to floor 100 and got so many weapons, except they were all useless. There was actually one decent weapon. I got the Slammer. Slammer is a super good hammer weapon that most speedrunners wish for. I deforested every stump I could possibly get my hands on, and discovered that the fruitback cave was actually massive now. That's cool. I also found some sort of mineral cave that has minerals lying all over the ground. I guess, handy? More stuff for the museum, I guess? But seriously, when the heck did all this stuff get here? I've been on this farm for 30 days now and I still haven't found everything. I cleaned up around the shed the rest of the day after that. I had big plans on day 39, but somehow there's a festival today. How do festivals always happen on the days I have a bunch of stuff to do? I did manage to donate the harder than stone Robin needed, and place my lightning rods at least. Farmed more iron and cleared space on the farm. Seriously, I cannot stress how massive this farm is. I'm not even gonna have it fully cleared by the end of these days. Iron farming and fishing on day 41. My blueberries and melons were ready on day 42, thanks to my totally tactical melon planting so they could be ready on the same day. Yeah. 
that happened. Didn't stop me from finishing the mines though, because that's exactly what I did. I had the skull key now, meaning I could beat Junima card soon, so that's fun. I might have gone a little bit overkill with the forgeables, since I was already high enough level to craft the lightning rods, but they were ready, so I harvested them and replanted a few extra since my melon sprinklers were open. I fished in the woods by the wizard and got another puppy fish, since my supply was running a little bit low. I mainly cleared my farm and totally beat Junima card first try. <laughs> Pops helped clearing a ton since they had great energy value also. I also did the unthinkable. I bought the Jojimar membership. My first time ever. We, we can talk about this decision in a few days when I'm ready. I did my basic chores and as I was walking back from Robbins after building my coupon day 45 and I, I was looking at the Jojimar warehouse, formerly the community center, and, and all of these emotions swept over me. What? What have I become? I... I was always a community center guy and... Now... And now... I've moved on! Screw the community center, Jojo for life! I also got fishing level 10 or something, I guess. On day 46, I was presented with a quest to help Haley get an emerald. Considering I hate Haley and everything she stands for, would I accept the quest? Yes. 750 gold is 750 gold. After that, I quickly sold my blueberries and realized I was an idiot. I'd been saving for 50k gold for the greenhouse upgrade from Joja, not realizing that it was only 35k gold. I fished trying to make the money back I spent on the upgrade the rest of the day. I got a tiny bit lucky, got an ancient seed. My silo finished on day 47, so I started clearing my farm of as much grass as I could. After that, I bought the minecart upgrade again from Joja, then donated the ancient seed and planted it near a scarecrow. Day 48 was my second favorite kind of day, a farm maintenance day. I crafted 10 quality sprinklers with materials I had lying around, and bought 80 fertilizers and 80 blueberries for my greenhouse. Greenhouse is a little bit bigger thanks to the mod, which is pretty cool. After that, I started work on more paths and a small tree farm for oak resin, in case I ever wanted to make cakes. I planted and fertilized 45 acorn seeds on day 49, bought a rare seed from the traveling merchant, and fished for some money. I harvested my blueberries and forageables on day 50. I crafted them all into seed packets, and sold them for a pretty penny at Pierre's. Using that money, I expanded my sprinkler empire even further, reaching the upper limits of basic sprinkler sanity. I also decided I was going to make even more green sprinklers, so I went and got this insane iron patch on the very first floor I went to, giving me all the iron I needed. Day 51, I delivered the girl I was into a dead fish, then... wait, what? She- she stepped on a bunny and- what? Anyways, after that, I expanded my greenhouse sprinkler setup and discovered that I had accidentally not had Ridgeside Valley set up properly the entire time. You see, partway through recording this, my save got a little bit messed up, so I decided to fix all the mods by reinstalling them, and uh, in the process I read the scary red text that sometimes shows up at the Smappy console and realized it didn't load in. I just messed around, waiting for tomorrow so I could go to Ridgeside Valley. I made my way up to the gondola and headed over to the village on day 52. I was greeted on my arrival by a edgelord anime protagonist Junimo. Um, after that I wandered down to some sort of bridge science lab and met this guy who was very rude to me, so I beat him a little, but uh, after that I moved on to the town. The town was super big and I didn't have enough time in the day to explore it all, so I headed straight up. Broke a stump and gained access to some sort of weird forest with a ton of monsters. I also met another ninja who told me I was basically dead if I went into said forest. And wow, oh okay, that's a lot of monsters. <laughs> and whatever, I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm pretty high combat level, have decent gear and have a pretty good weapon. Oh my god, all my health is gone. After that near-death experience, I realized that these guys actually drop a material that sell for 100 gold each. And by drop, I mean drop a lot. <laughs> After that, wait, what? Th that's a prismatic shard just lying. O okay, sure, I'll take it. I finished the trip with over 10,000 gold worth of monster drops. Uh, sadly, I could not find a way around the new map, so I just passed out. Day 53. I was straight back to Ridgeside Valley on day 53 and found that the two ninjas I met earlier actually had a house, which was kind of cool. Uh, the only thing I noticed that I could trade the monster stuff for were clothes, so I decided I was just going to sell it all. I farmed the forest for the rest of the day since killing monsters was super satisfying and very profitable. I also got a second prismatic shard. That's two in two days. Day 54. I harvested my blueberries and sold them, then spent the whole day killing stuff in the forest. It's, it's just so satisfying. I woke up to around 10 batteries being ready, which is pretty awesome, then finished up decorating my tree farm. I'd put in some paths earlier to prevent acorns from shredding, but I thought that some torches added to it would be nice as well. I was also in the mood for some fishing, so I did that, and then decorated even more. 
Tomorrow morning, I got straight back into decorating. I had a plan to turn this cute fenced-in area into my animal enclosure. However, I had two more things on my to-do list before that. I delivered another puppy fish to Sophia, then noticed that I was a bit short on stone, so I decided to go farm some so I could build my coop. I am just now realizing while writing this that I could have simply bought some stone from Robin, but uh, whatever. By the time I had enough stone, Robin was closed. After that, since it was the Moonlight Jellies event, I just vibed to the music. Fall first on day 57. I got to tilling my sprinklers straight away, then headed to Georgia Mart to buy my seeds. I forgot last season, but I can buy my seeds at Georgia for cheaper since I have the membership. I barely watered all my cranberries before passing out, and yes, I do need to water them all for maximum amount of harvests. On day 58, I realized that you can till grass anywhere on the map and it fills your silo, so I filled my silo straight away. After that, I got two more cutscenes when I went back to Ridgeside Valley. One of them introduced me to the town, which would have been nice a few days ago. Anyways, I also got a cutscene where this leech mare wanted me to fix her stupid minecart system for 150k. Yeah, right, buddy. <laughs> Go get a job. After that, I realized my farm was even bigger than I thought and found two more areas I didn't even know existed, so that was pretty cool. I didn't have time to clear them all, but I was planning on doing it tomorrow morning. Today, I cleared both of the areas on my farm and more of the farm just randomly in general. I also made sure to clear the rock area as satisfyingly as possible for this cool sped up time lapse. Also in the rock area, I found a secret path that couldn't be accessed due to a meteor block in the way, so I instantly prepared my pickaxe for upgrade. I placed some more fences on day 60 and started getting my animal area completely ready. Also, it wouldn't let me place my fence here, even though it would make the area look 10 times better. Valve, please fix. I was also back to the forest since, I mean, come on, by now you know I'm addicted. Greenhouse blueberries were ready on day 61, so that was a free 10k. I also bought some chickens and named them after my channel members. Huge thanks to Drake for donating $100 a month, and two more huge thanks to Alexandra and for $15 a month. After that, I fished for the rest of the day getting puppy fish so I could get the money back to unlock the desert. I also tapped a few trees in case I needed to panic rain totem to buy a pendant for Sophia to marry her. Better safe than sorry. On day 62, I got my gold pickaxe from the mail, then fished in a few places around the map for no reason in particular. After that, I checked both of the new areas on my farm and then headed to bed. I gifted Sophia on day 63, then upped my fishing game by buying some new gear from Willy. I had also saved up enough money to buy the bus to the desert, so I headed over to Joja and bought that. Cranberry harvest on day 64, then headed over to the desert. I wanted to check it out and also get my galaxy sword. I arrived and it was like a solid five times bigger than the normal desert. It was kind of crazy. It was like a 30 second run down to the three pillars. I snagged my galaxy sword, then met Sandy and headed home. Got some money on day 65, from blueberries today, then started a half-hearted attempt at chest organizing before giving up and going to bed. I also finally got the stuff to complete the fancy shed Robin told me about. I placed the stuff in the chest and eagerly awaited for tomorrow morning. I was gonna organize on day 66, but I gave up. I was in a mood for some decorating though, so I just placed more paths and just started spam planting trees everywhere to see if it looked nice. If I didn't like it, I would just chop them all down and get a ton more wood. Between planting trees and placing paths, the entire day was gone. On day 67, I was greeted with a cutscene where Sophia asked if I wanted to help organize her dead parent's bedroom. I of course said yes, and was told to come back tomorrow morning. Afterwards, I headed back home to grab some materials to upgrade my house. After that, I upgraded my house, then checked out my new fancy shed. It was basically a cellar and an extra greenhouse. It was kind of pointless since I didn't have casks, but I was gonna, probably going to put something else in there, so it was still kind of nice. The extra greenhouse space was also very cool. I also hoded all the flex my animation canceling. However, I wasn't done yet. I wasted a ton of wood on fences and also broke- oh, oh wow. Oh wow, oh, okay, that's a lot of money wasted on cranberries. But the fence looks solid, I guess? I also fenced in my oak trees and tabbered a few of them, since I eventually won a bunch of kegs. I checked out Sophia's cutscene straight away on day 68, and it was kinda wholesome to be honest. After the cutscene finished, I decided I wanted to get some more quality sprinklers, so I spent the whole day farming gold and iron ore. I also got some coal, which was really nice, since I was unfortunately out of it. Uh, another cranberry harvest awaited me on day 69. Don't even think about it. Afterwards, I got some coal and made a few preserve jars, and bought some pumpkins to jar. Inside animation cancelling setup, I didn't mind watering in another odd 50 pumpkins by hand, since I didn't think it was worth it to buy more sprinklers for that to be honest. I watched a full cutscene where Sophia was just hanging out the entire day. 
She started out by hanging out with Haley, then just wandered around the town having a good time. Afterwards, she pulled a Reddit moment. I also started dating her, but I forgot to record it. <laughs> Since I had lots of time left in the day, I set up some weird path pattern that I thought looked nice, then just went to bed. I was really tired on day 71, so I forgot to hit record, but I set up like an orchard area and just expanded the path place basically. I was just gonna chill on day 72 or maybe finish my orchard, but I'd completely forgot the about fair. I had nothing prepared, so I was just gonna bring a bunch of random stuff and hope to get lucky, but uh, I actually realized I could just use the mare's underpants to get 750 points for basically zero effort. However, I did not have enough stone, so I had to run to the mines and farm some up quickly. After that, I got my points, and after a little bit of gambling, I hit 2,000 points and bought my second star drop. I didn't really know what to do on day 73, so I got a quest from the board and farmed 40 cop. After that, I checked out the Adventurer's Guild, and it gave me a little bit of cutscene, telling me to buy Galaxy Web. I like this since normally it's just kind of hidden away in a menu. Afterwards, I decided I wanted to go to Skull Cavern, so I went and farmed enough Iridium for an Iridium pickaxe on high floors. I somehow managed to get a Prismatic Shard on floor 3, so that was kind of hilarious. I also got just enough Iridium combined with the Iridium I already had from Geode. Day 74, I harvested my blueberries, cranberries, and the sweet gem berry I got for the bear in the woods. Also, finally I had enough of running around the stupidly big map, so I bought a horse state. Since it was also Marty's birthday, and I had a spare diamond lying around, I just decided to gift her for no reason at all. I snagged a longer quest from the board that required me to craft 50 quality fertilizer. After checking out the recipe, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. Getting all that fish kind of going to be annoying. Who knows, I might if I have enough time though. I also worked on donating some more things to the museum since I stupidly didn't pick Acrobat for whatever reason. Afterwards, I just kind of shot in the dirt with some juvenile cart, but since I was at a practice, I lost. On day 76, I randomly checked my mail, and I'm sure glad I did because I was informed about the Ridgeside Valley Fair. They had two stalls and seemed to be engaged in some kind of gender war because two stalls had girls rule and boys rule, and oh my god, this is so unbalanced. In the girls stall, there was a savage ring, a magic rock candy, and an ancient fruit for less than 15,000 gold. The savage ring was selling for 1,500 gold. It's literally the most OP ring in the game. I bought them all, of course, but oh my god, this is so unbalanced in our game design, please. Boy stall was a little bit worse, but still crazy since it was selling a prismatic shard. Afterwards, I just checked out the concert, then let it to sleep. Day 77 had an awful skull cavern run we do not talk about. Day 78, I probably did some stuff besides fishing, but I don't know, because I forgot to record the start of it. Today, I harvested some more of my cranberries, then headed over to Clint to upgrade my pickaxe. However, while I was fishing, I accidentally bugged the game, and the real sound would just not go away, even when I stopped fishing. And when I finished the day and, and tried to save, it, it infinitely loaded, then, then crashed. So I just redid the day, and the only thing I did different was I farm some coal for Clint. Day 80, I started fishing up the last of the fish I needed for the fertilizer. I'd been fishing over the past few days just when I had spare time, then bought the bridge upgrade so I could get to the quarry. With my fertilizer in hand, I dropped it off at Susan's, then chopped down easily 100 odd trees. I had been breaking every respawning stump daily so I could get the forging level 10. I also finally reached 10 hearts with Sophia, meaning I could marry her soon. On day 82, my first objective was to buy a mermaid's pendant, and I did that. I harvested my blueberries after that and grabbed my unused sprinklers for some star. I went and spent my 30k gold on star fruit just for funsies. I don't even know why to be honest. I cleared my quarry and got the golden scythe on day 83, then fished till spirit seed. The maze was a lot different and it took me a lot longer than I would like to admit. <laughs> I got my last cranberry harvest on the 28th of fall, or on day 84. I just wanted to play some more Juno card on day 84, just to relax. Afterwards, I headed over to the forest in Ridgeside Valley and just killed some guys for some more chillin'. Day 85, I got married to the love of my life, Sophia. Although it was on the first of winter, so it looked kinda chilly, especially with Haley wearing a skirt. The first morning with Sophia, I had a magical moment, then accidentally master on the head with a hammer, kinda ruining the moment. Afterwards, I redid my greenhouse and my chest storage area. Did a weird setup with sprinklers and furnaces and jars, but I think it turned out pretty nice, honestly. I also found out thanks to a mod that it recolors everything, and it looks really nice in winter, actually. I like the color of stuff, it's very blue. On day 86, I wanted to decorate more crazy. I know. As a start, I wanted to spend a couple thousand dollars on grass and trees to fix up this area, because it looked kind of empty. I also added a bunch more grass to the chest storage area, and I think it looks so much better. Things were still a little bit dark for my liking, though, so I went and crafted a bunch of torches and put them everywhere. I was so engrossed in my decorating, I lost track of time, but I made it to bed just at 1.40, right before passing out. I noticed I had a bunch of batteries left over in day 87, so I made a ton of iron lamp posts and put them all over the place. I didn't really like the look of my lightning rod area also, so I pathed all of it and moved them a little bit. Anyways, after that, I started prepping for a redemption skull cavern run since the first one was just so bad I didn't even want to show the footage. I was also kind of poor, so I had to go farm up some iron and coal to craft more explosive ammo. 
I farmed and smelted more iron on day 88 in preparation for my Skull Caverns run. I didn't really know what else to do after that, so I fished and just tried to beat Juno McCart again. I actually managed to beat Juno McCart on day 89. After that, I didn't really like the look of all the half-grown trees, so I made some tree fertilizer, then realized that they don't work in winter, so it was kind of a waste. After that, since I liked the look of the area below the second cellar area, but it was kind of overgrown, I fenced it in, added paths, and placed torch everywhere to light everything up. A neat decorating tip is to hide torches behind trees for the light effect, but without the ugly torches. I finished decorating the bottom area on day 90. I'm not really that good at decorating, but I think the farm looks really nice so far and I'm kind of proud. Day 91 I prepared for the upcoming Skull Cavern Run Redemption. I couldn't do it tomorrow sadly since it was the ice fishing festival and I didn't want to miss it. In preparation, I bought 20 staircases using the jade I had, traded some rupees for spicy eel, and made some triple shot espresso. I also completely emptied my inventory, leaving only the essentials for running. The rest of the day I tried to get 50k points in Juno Kart, but missed by about 6k points unfortunately. I headed over to the ice festival straight away on day 92. I actually got an insane lucky with fish bites, so I won the festival. Nice change of pace with the sailor cap instead of the straw hat, am I right? I had a redemption skull cavern run on day 93. I got crazily lucky. I got an auto pattern, 10 prismatic shards, and 280 floor deeps with 650 iridium. The only gear I used was 20 star cases, a magic rock candy I got for only 10k gold at the festival, and 300-ish explosive ammo. Much better than my other run. I placed the spoils of my victory in skull caverns on day 94, then collected all my crops in the greenhouse, meaning I finally had some money. And me being me, I had also forgotten that I had planted some starfruit earlier, so that was even more money. I wouldn't have had time to wine or jar them and still upgrade my axe, so I planned on just selling him to Pierre. But since he was closed, I had to ship an upgrade tomorrow. I was in a million or sigma grind set as well, so I sent up a ton of furnaces to smelt all my iridium for massive profits. Day 95, I smelted more iridium and upgraded my axe. Afterwards, I bashed my head against a wall. Sorry, I, I played more Juno Mokart. Since a lot of my farm was still empty also, I placed paths and torches everywhere. I visited the wizard on day 96 since I got a letter from him. He told me I could check out his library if I stayed away from the statue and the teleport thingy. I of course said I would. Kidding, I ran over and tried to use them all, but it wouldn't let me sadly. After I went home, but I simply just, I just could not stand that my entire farm was not pathed and grassed. So I continue that till the end of the day. On day 97, I had a few things I wanted to do. Since I never got around to building the barn that was gonna fill the area below my coop, I decided it would look really nice as a keg and jar area. I was also sadly short on materials to make jars, so I needed to go buy 100 coal and smelt up some iron and copper for the kegs. I had two more big purchases planned after that. I bought the final Joja upgrade, meaning I completed two out of three of my objectives. The next big upgrade was the Galaxy Hammer. If you don't already know, this is the best weapon in the game by far. Ignore the infinity gap. Between the ground pound you can do by right clicking and spamming click and C, and the insane DPS with animation cancelling, swords are obsolete. My farm wasn't lit enough to my liking on day 98, especially the orchard area. So I snuck torches in a pattern in between all of the trees and added some cool looking paths. I sadly ran out of stone just before finishing, but thanks to the magic of video editing, I can make it look finished. After heading into town to open some geodes to unlock the sewer, I got the Joja completion cutscene at my awesome soda machine. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it, but I think I'm probably going to put it near Grandpa's shrine. After that cutscene, Clint's was closed for some reason, so I just went home and finished up that last bit of decorating. I'm so close to making it how I want. Day 99, I headed straight to Emily's to make my drip. I look awesome. Afterwards, I just tied up loose ends around my farm. Alright, day 100. Now, you might remember that I had three goals, and that I've only completed two of them. That's because you decide if I complete the last one or not. Leave a comment if you think I made my farm not awful. If you want to see a full farm tour of it, I'm uploading it to my second channel, so go check it out over there. That channel is currently at 826 subscribers, and this one is at 15,850. Let's shoot for 17,000 and 1,000 subscribers, respectively. See you guys later.